This day when she came to the well, she brought, she thought that no one would be there. But what she got was someone who knew her better than she did. You know, Jesus has a way with people. He understood her uneasiness when he asked for a drink. But, she, but she's streetwise, and she knows that nobody asks for anything without something in return. And you know what? She's right. He was interested in something else than water. He was interested in her heart. She couldn't remember the last time she was spoken to with respect. Jesus talked to her about living water that that quenches the thirst of the soul. And she asked Jesus for some of this living water so that she would no longer have to come to the well and be thirsty any longer. And Jesus said, go, call your husband and, and come back. And her heart sank. Finally, someone who didn't care that she was a Samaritan, someone who didn't look down on her because she was a woman, here was the closest thing that she had felt to kindness and gentleness in her life. And Jesus had to ask about that. Anything but that. You know, she thought about lying. But she told the truth. I have no husband. You know, kindness has a way of bringing out the truth. And we all know the rest of the story. You know, I sometimes wish that we didn't know the rest of the story. Sometimes I wished that you would hang on what Jesus was going to do and to say next. Because we've all wanted to do the same thing. We've all wanted to take off the mask, stop the pretending. We've all wondered what God would do if we opened that inner door of our private world of sin. This woman, She wondered what would Jesus would do next. Would his kindness end? Would he leave, get mad, think her to be worthless? If you are where she has been, then you need to hear what I say next. Jesus said, you're right. You have five husbands. And the one now that you are living with won't even give you his name. No criticism. No anger. No, what a mess you've made out of your life. The woman was floored. There was something very different about this particular holy man. And then she asked a very revealing question. One that went to the very depths of who she was. Where is God? I wonder what Jesus did when he heard those words. I wonder. I wonder if his eyes watered. Did he smile? Did he look up into the clouds and give his father a wink? Jesus parked himself at a well of a thirsty woman looking for God. A woman with rejection after rejection. An insignificant woman having an an unsatiable appetite for God. For many of you, the stories of those two women are emoting, but distant. I mean, after all. You belong. You are needed. And you know it. You have more friends than you can count and more things to do than you can accomplish. The word insignificant will never be found chiseled on your tombstone. 
be thankful. Very thankful. But some here today are different. You thought about the epitaph because it could be your epitaph. You see the face of Gray Smith when you look into the mirror each morning. You know why the Samaritan woman avoided people. Because you do the same thing. I want to kind of wrap up today with these thoughts. Today I've talked to you about two graves. The first is lonely, sitting in Marlboro Cemetery, unkept, the grave of Grace L. Smith. She didn't know love, she didn't know rest, and she never really lived. The second is near a water well, a tombstone, a water jug a forgotten jug. There are no words etched on the jug, it, but it is of great significance, for it is the burial place of that which is insignificant. I don't know if Grace L. Smith had children or was a mother. It seems that something was very sad in her life for someone to place those words on her stone. I hope that Grace finally had a chance like the woman at the well to meet the Christ that changed her life. And I hope for each of you that you have the chance to meet the Christ that can change your life. Amen.